Welcome to a video about subsets and set operations. We're going to begin by talking about um, subsets. So first we're going to define a universal set. The universal set is the set of all elements of interest, typically denoted with the capital letter U. Now notice it says the elements of interest. The universal set is not the set of all things in the whole universe, okay? Please don't misunderstand that. We could define the universal set as the set of digits, zero through nine. We could define the universal set as the set of all vowels in the alphabet. We could define the universal set as the set of all students in a particular class. So again, it's the elements of interest. What are we interested in? It's not just everything in the universe. Now, once we've defined our universal set, we can have a subset. So a subset is a set that contains anywhere from no elements of some other set, usually the universal set, up to and including all elements of that other set. The notation for that is right here, okay? This is the order that the symbol always goes in, and you read this, A is a subset of B. So for example, if I looked at um, a section of a course as the universal set, all the students in the class as a universal set, a subset would be, maybe I pick zero students um, to earn, I don't know, bonus points or something. Maybe I pick five students, or maybe I pick everybody. So I can pick from zero people up to everyone in the class, and that would be a subset. Now, when it comes to a proper subset, they're very similar, subsets and proper subsets. The difference is that in a proper subset, I can choose anywhere from no elements up to and including all but one element of some other set. So it would be a cruel, but if back to using my students in a class as the example, I could choose anywhere from zero students to say earn extra credit up to all but one person. And I could say to one person, sorry, you're out of luck. Or I could choose anywhere in between. The notation for this one is right here. Notice the difference. Does, um, this proper subset symbol does not contain the little bar underneath it. And we say this, A is a proper subset of B. Now, when it comes to these two symbols, I think of them similar to a less than or equal to symbol or just a strictly less than symbol. And actually it works pretty well for subsets because in this case, you can have equality. You don't have to, okay? For example, if I said pick a number less than or equal to eight, you don't have to choose the number eight to pick a number that satisfies that condition, but you could. In this example, think of this as a strict less than. If I said pick a number less than eight, you cannot choose the number eight because it's equal, but you could choose any number smaller than eight. Kind of the same thing in terms of sets. You can choose any number of elements in the set except every single element in the set. So let's take a look at a quick example. So here I have a universal set. Notice I've defined it as the numbers two, four, six, and eight. And then I have set A containing four, six, and eight. Now do notice that the number four and the number six and the number eight have been drawn from set U and put into set A. Therefore, we can say that A is indeed a subset of set U because it contains anywhere from no elements up to and including all elements, namely three elements in this case. We can also say in this case that A is a proper subset of set U because it doesn't contain every element of set U. Now when we look at set B, notice that in set B every element in set B is also in set U. Okay, so we have taken everything from set U and we have put it into set B. That means that B, sorry, B is a subset of set U. However, if we wanted to say B is a proper subset of set U, 
That is not true, so we're gonna put a slash through it, meaning it's not a proper subset, because those sets are equal. And remember, a proper subset has to contain fewer elements than the set in which you're comparing it to, in this case, set U. And then if we look at this last one, set C, compared to set U, notice that set C has this, oh, oops, sorry, thought that was my highlighter. The set C has this element of 10 in it. Notice that 10 is not at all in set U. So C cannot be a subset of set U because C contains something that's not in U. Similarly, C is also not a proper subset of set U because again, there's a 10 that I did not get from set U, the universal set. I can only use these items here in the universal set to create subsets and proper subsets of set U. Now let's move on to looking at some set operations. So a union of sets is the set of all elements in set A or in set B. Now the or for us means one set the other set, or both sets. This might be a little different from how you think of or in the English language. If I said to you, do you want chocolate ice cream or vanilla ice cream, you might assume that you have to pick one or the other. But the definition of or in mathematics is that you can have one or the other, or you can have both. And that is what a union is. The notation for a union is this right here, A union B. And that's how we say that symbol, A union B. I like to think of this union symbol as like a cup or a bag where you're throwing everything in that bag that was in set A and in set B. And you throw everything together in one bag to make a union. An intersection is the set of all elements in set A and in set B. So in this case, they have to be in both. So it's what they have in common. The symbol is this one right here, and the way you say this is A intersect B. And again, it's what they share in common. The last set operation we're gonna look at is the complement. That is the set of all elements in the universal set that are not in set a. Kind of think of it as an opposite, if you would like. Um, the symbol that we're going to use most of the time is this one right here with a little C. It looks like an exponent that's a C. We say that A complement. However, depending on who the textbook author is, or whose video you're watching, or who wrote the question um, in a homework set, you also might see either one of these two symbols as well. These are just additional symbols for complement. It means the exact same thing. So we're going to use these sets down here at the bottom to show you some examples of how this works. So here I have a universal set. My universal set contains the numbers 1 through 6. And then notice I created two subsets, set A, 2, 3, 4, and 5, set B that contains 1, 3, and 5. So what we're going to do is we are going to find each of these um, operate or do each of these operations on set A and set B. So for example, let's start with A union B. So what we want to do is combine everything together. So if it's in set A, set B, or both, we're going to put them all together. And so the way I usually approach this is I write down all the elements of set A first. And then I go look at set B and I write down any other items that I haven't already accounted for. So in this case, I have not written down a one, but I already have the three and the five. And so we're just gonna go ahead and end that there. We don't wanna duplicate, okay? It's just like if you went to the grocery store and you happen to bag your three packages of strawberries in two or three different bags instead of all in one, you don't have to continue to say, I bought strawberries. Well, I bought strawberries. I brought strawberries. No, you bought strawberries. It doesn't matter how many packages you purchased. So that's a union. 
For the intersection, A intersect B, what we're looking for is what do set A and set B have in common. And what you'll notice is that set A has a 3 and so does set B. Set A has a 5 and so does set B. And so that is the intersection, 3 and 5. Then the other thing we're going to look at is the complement. So A complement is the elements of set U, the universal set, that are not in set A. So for example, what we could do is sort of look at crossing out the 2, 3, 4, and 5 from the universal set. And the complement is, in this case, the elements that are left, which are the 1 and the 6. Okay, the 1 and the 6. Similarly, if we were to find B complement, we would cross out, if you will, the 1, 3, and 5 from set B. Now I'm going to cross those off using red um, because I've already used blue. So 1, 3, and 5. And if you look at the numbers not crossed off with red or with the downward slash, um, one of the things I hope you notice is that the numbers that are remaining are 2, 4, and 6. That is the complement of B. So now we're going to move on and do the same type of thing, um, but with some additional problems. And I've changed up the universal set and my subsets. So in this case, um, I'm using the universal set as the letters in the word personal. And then I've created three subsets. And notice that each of these subsets only uses letters from the word personal, from the universal set. So my set A is the letters in loans, B is my letters in the word real, and C is the letters in the word nope. So we're going to use those to um, set some examples here, um, just to review what we've learned and then take it an extra step further. So starting with number one, A union B, again, means combine everything in A and everything in B. So again, I'm going to begin with all of the elements of set A, the letters in the word loans, and then I'm going to move over to set B, and I'm going to include any elements that I have not already included in my union. So that would be the letter R and the letter E. Notice I already have an A and an L because that's in the word loans. Okay. All right, number two, B intersect C. So the intersection is what set B and set C have in common. When I'm looking for things in common, the only element that is contained in both set B and set C is the letter E. So that's my intersection. For number three, B complement is the letters in the universal set that are not in set B. The letters in the universal set that are not in set B. So if I take my pen here, and I'm just gonna put a little check mark above the letters in set B real, R-E-A-L, rather than crossing them off. Um, anything checked is in set B. What I wanna do is now write down the letters that are not in set B or the elements. So P, S, O, N. Okay, that would be B complement. And I'm going to take a second just to erase those check marks because we don't want them to get in the way. Moving on. So, um, number four. Now, notice we have a set of parentheses here. Just like with regular algebra rules, um, parentheses, the grouping symbols, means we're going to do that first, okay? That's the first step. So what we're going to do first is we're going to find C union A. C union A. So I'm going to start with the letters in set C, N, O, P, E. And now I'm going to combine them with the letters in set A um, that I've not already written down. So L, I've already got an O, A, I already have an N, and S. 
and then I want to form an intersection with set B. And notice the intersection now is what they have in common. So we want to take this no blast here, no blast, this first set, C, union A, and we want to figure out what it has in common with set B, which is the letters in real, R, E, A, L. And so what I notice is that there is no R, but there is an E, there's an A, and there's an L. And so there is my final result, E, L, A. And by the way, it doesn't matter the order in which you write the elements, so you can put them in any order you want. All right, looking at number five, again, we have a set of parentheses. And so we're going to take care of those parentheses first, which means we want to find A union B. Now, one of the things I'm going to point out is that I've already found A union B. It's right here in number one. And so I'm going to use that to help me out because then I don't have to rethink through that whole problem. So A union B is L-O-A-N-S. R E, and then I want the complement of that. And so what that means is we're going to come back up to our universal set and we're going to essentially cross out all of the letters in A union B. Okay, so if we do that, we're going to um, be marking out L O A N S R E. And notice there's only one thing left. That's the P, and that is therefore the complement of A union B. I'm going to erase those little check marks again. And now let's come look at question number six. All right, similar to the last one, we have a set of parentheses, but within those parentheses, we have this complement. And the complement is sort of, think of it like an exponent. When it comes to order of operations in algebra, exponents within the grouping symbols would come first. Okay, so first we're going to do B complement. And again, I'm going to use the fact that we found B complement in number three to help us out. So B complement is P-S-O-N. And I want to form a union with the empty set. That's what that symbol there means, the circle with the slash, the empty set. The other way you can write the empty set is just a set of braces with nothing in it. And so I'm going to write it that way because I think it actually will help us a little bit with this next step. So for a union, remember, we are going to combine what's in our B complement with what's in the empty set. Well, if I combine P-S-O-N with nothing, I end up with P-S-O and N. Okay, if I combine it with nothing, I end up with what I started with. It's kind of like adding zero, if you will. And then we want to intersect that with set A. So now what I want to do is I want to look at this P-S-O-N and I want to come up here to set A to loans, L-O-A-N-S, and I want to figure out what they have in common. And what I notice that they have in common is the O, the N, and the S. The O, the N, and the S. And so there's our final result. And then last but not least, moving on to number seven. So again, I have a set of parentheses and notice this time our complement is outside of the parentheses. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what B intersect C is first, then we'll find the complement. And just like in these previous ones, I've already found B intersect C in number two. So that's going to make things again a little bit easier. B intersect C is just the element E and I want to find the complement of that. So if I go back up to my universal set, the complement of the set containing the letter E means it contains every other letter in personal but not the letter E. So I'm gonna use my cursor here, my arrow to cover up the E, and it's every other letter that appears in personal. 
So it's P R S O N A L. And we want to intersect that with the empty set. And again, I'm going to draw that empty set as the braces that have nothing in them. Now, recall that the intersection means what do they have in common? So if I have all this stuff, okay, personal minus the E, okay, I've got all these elements, and I say, what do they share in common with empty, the empty set? Okay. What do they have in common? They have nothing in common. There's nothing in common. And so in this case, the answer is the empty set. They share nothing in common. They have nothing that's alike from one set to the other because set, um, the empty set happens to be empty.